Now let's take a look at this e-mini S&Ps. Now I know most of you may be day traders and I want to say thank you for spending some time with us here and out of your day but I think this is a great little indication that you you're going to walk away with something rather than uh, an introduction to um, an idea. The key concept is notice that very similar the markets in a downtrend defined by lower highs lower lows lower closes lower closing lows right markets trading below or south of moving average values all of a sudden we see a reversal bar indicated by our blue triangle at a pivot support or pivot point moving average green line is our pivot point by the way our pivot point support target next we have a higher high a higher low higher close and open and the market closes above a past high now in this uptrend we are coming close to a pivot point which can be construed as resistance and notice that we start to see the bullish momentum fail now this is kind of an interesting because notice that the uptrend conditions have changed we have a lower high we have a lower low and the market does something it did not do before it closes below a past prior low the trend conditions changed so the market went from uptrend all of a sudden a little bit sideways and then we reverse the trend so understanding when to get off the train ride, so to speak, if you go from a buy signal, um, and this particular example is a 15-minute, obviously a slow day. This was back in September. And um, as you can notice, this, this is obviously the market near its highs, 1556 area. Uh, the market proceeded to go higher after this time frame after the October monthly unemployment report but the point is this is a 15 minute chart it doesn't matter whether it's a Japanese yen an e-mini a daily a weekly a monthly time period the same conditions exist I'd like to show you the after of the same day and the same situation now let's say you do not use stops and you develop a trading system that helps you to pinpoint these reversal points or reversal conditions in the market if you went, for example, when this buy signal was generated on the close until the next generated sell signal and reversed your position, it was profitable by $112.50 per S&P or E-mini contract. Considering it's a anywhere between $500 to $1,000 uh, day trading margin, not a bad return in, in approximately, let's count them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 time periods 150 minutes a little over two hours from sell signal to approximate target area noticing that we just look at a small move here 237.50 on two signals this is something that can help you as a trader to determine um, a potential trading opportunity by staying on the right side of the market when did the uptrend cease to exist when we had the first lower closing low entering on sell signals with a risk factor that can be determined may help you uncover whether you want to be in a market or out of the market staying on the right side of the market re-entering on trades this is the area that I think most traders can use help in looking for resistance predetermined looking for conditional changes notice here that the market goes up it does move sideways does it resume the uptrend no it reverses the daily or first established uptrend and I think this is something that traders need to realize conditional phases in the marketplace so most traders don't know how to trade these opposite yet like market opportunities as well so we've we've kind of talked a little bit about trend conditions how about if you identify a longer term trend and for example you're just not sure because of the risk or the volatility you want to participate in that market so I asked traders listen if you have this type of knowledge now and you can say gee this market's been in a major trend and 
it's probably going to reverse we've consolidated you have all kinds of factual information maybe you have statistical information maybe you have back test studies seasonalities um, you have a lot of things going for you that you believe a market may move but you are afraid to enter that market because of increased volatility and, and the risk factor well trading a like market but yet opposite side some consider it potentially a spread but a spread is simultaneously buying one market and selling the other market and looking for an outperformance um, for a profitable trade how about possibly and this is something that we discussed at this particular seminar is how traders need to learn how to spot longer term opportunities and then use the strategies maybe a spread options or a combination of both to take advantage of high probability turn signals and the turn signals can be derived by understanding the phases markets go in from trend consolidation and look for these patterns for example in early September the market and as you see on your right side of the chart the market was in the equities on a downtrend we had a nice hammer capitulated low on August 16th the market kind of moved higher we were in a downtrend kind of went consolidation some people thought possibly this was going to roll over others thought this market may reverse and move higher on the year especially as uh, there was a lot of talk the Fed was going to lower interest rates but more importantly it's an election year so whatever your reasons were in determining the market's value equities at the time went from if you recall the Dow Jones Industrial Average in early July went from being up nearly 12 percent on the year to only being up one percent so even if you looked at a percentage value change and you thought maybe the stock market could finish 2007 positive maybe five six seven possibly eight percent up on the year even if we retraced and generated a trade back to test the highs I'd like to be buying but due to the volatility options are too expensive number one Number two, stepping in front of the freight train here because we really do not have the complete symmetry of higher highs and higher lows. Just this pattern here. We have a, a high off of a major low, a pullback, a higher high, a higher low. But we don't have an established trend. We're still kind of sideways, right? You see this pattern that I'm looking at? The symmetry of higher highs, higher lows. Why not trade the opposite side but the alike market? And that's what we were talking about. And so if you think the stocks, and if you notice this market right now, the market at this point in time is going, in the equities, is going down. And the bonds are doing what? They're going up. So here's a situation. In this case, why not, if the equities go up, wouldn't it make sense that bonds potentially could go down? Maybe I could start to look at some selling opportunities in bonds relatively speaking call options and equities may be too expensive what are put values in the bond market by using a derivative or using like market analysis but doing the uh, opposite may give you a better gain a better edge or profitable opportunity in the marketplace in fact bonds did go down stocks of course as you know have rallied and have challenged this area up in here at 1575 as of this date what's interesting about that bond chart I'd like to go back here something that you may not see because it's not here is that this particular week in September the weekly pivot was 114 area and a monthly confluence a monthly pivot resistance was also tagged at 114 area the actual high was 11406 before it, it sold off so we had an area of confluence of pivot resistance and that's something that you don't see on the chart so what are pivots well pivots are based on a math calculation they help confirm other technical indicators and you can use daily weekly and monthly time frames the greatest thing is they incorporate the two elements of time and price I'm using the data from last week, last month, and yesterday to help give me targeted resistance levels and targeted support levels. Using pivot points 
help not only target what the potential high and low is, um, they also can be used as a moving average study. And so they can give me, and if I use pivot points in multiple time periods, number one, for support and resistance, I can also use the pivot points um, in a moving average component to help me uncover the market's condition. Bullish or bearish? Are we still remaining in a bull trend? If so, if we're in a longer term bull trend like a monthly or weekly, then I want to look for pullbacks against daily pivot support and enter on the long side. And again, pivot points can be used in a moving average system. Now, there are some people that use multiple resistance and multiple support levels, including the midpoint of those areas to help really fine tune and pinpoint highs and lows. If we define an uptrend as higher highs and higher lows, you'll notice that we see markets making closes above highs. You see that the market has higher highs than past highs and higher lows. So if we're bullish and we think that this breakout's going to continue, if you bought on this close and the market fell to S1, the odds of you wanting to stay with that trade, who knows? You may decide to go short at that point or exit your trade. The risk is too great. Instead, if you are bullish, Buying a pullback and staying with the trend using pivot points can help define that business plan. Because after all, that's what you've heard. In an uptrend, buy pullbacks. We'll define a pullback. What defines the pullback? 50% uh, retrace, 618 retrace with Fibonacci. Most people are familiar with that. How about if the market's truly bullish, potentially we want to look for the market to come near S1 if we're bullish. And I think that's one of the concepts that people fail or miss. When you use this many support and resistance lines, I think it's, um, it's a little burdensome and it can become confusing because you, all these lines on your screen, you're never going to know which line to trade off of. Where do I buy? Do I buy this line, that line, this line, that line? Uh, do I sell this line, this line? Where do I sell? You may be right every single day, but you won't know how to trade this stuff. That's where I came in and developed a program in using and incorporating a pivot point moving average method that, for example, if we were bearish, we'd see the opposite, lower highs, lower lows. And so I use the five point pivot point calculation method. It gives me two targeted resistance areas and two targeted supports. And then it gives me the pivot point. The pivot point is calculated by taking the high, the low, the close, the sum, divided by three, and that gives me the typical price, otherwise known as pivot point. If we're bearish, this is exactly what a pivot point would look like. We would see from this data, high, low, close. We'd get an R1, a pivot point, and a targeted S2, and that's exactly how it would look like. Doesn't this define lower highs and lower lows and as, as it relates to a downtrend? And that's what a definition of a downtrend is, correct? In fact, if you were bearish and you went short this day on the close, again, if you're bearish, we've been taught as traders to sell rallies, define a rally. Well, if you went short here thinking there is no rally and the market does not go down first, but rather opens higher, in fact, gaps higher, you may be a little bit nervous as a trader and get out of that trade. Pivot points help define a targeted level in a specific time frame. Now, this bar could be a week. This bar could be a monthly. This bar could be a day. We're using past price data on a specific time frame to help us uncover hidden support and resistance for the next time frame. And that's why pivot point analysis is probably one of the best leading price indicators. Let's take a, a look at this 60 minute bar chart of the British pound. Now what's interesting, what you see here is you see red, blue, and green. Let's define what that is. It's only three numbers and I know I just told you that I use the five point method but I use a filtering system that helps give me a targeted high, a targeted low, and the blue line is the actual typical price 
which in an extremely bullish market, the typical price or the pivot point can act as support. So if I'm bullish, I'm looking for the market to get down from S1 up to the pivot point to R2. Now notice in our system, it filters out based on this day's data what the potential range might be. It came close to the green support and just went a little bit above the red resistance. In the next day, prices stayed contained almost exactly to the tick to the predicted resistance down to the support. The next day, the market came down to the exact support. Now, I didn't draw these lines after the fact. This is all programmed, which is the neat thing about using pivot points. Number one, you can back test them, overlay them on a chart, and see the effectiveness that they have in the market price. Notice that we go from the exact low almost to the exact high. The market has a small range day. It comes down to the exact support area, comes close to the resistance. And now, as an astute trader, notice that we are in an uptrend and we're consolidating. We have a what? A potential one, two, three bottom pattern. And most people, including I'm sure the audience right now, would say, look, this is a very strong double bottom. We're at support. We take out this high, and this market's going to run for the races. The dollar's falling to zero. Now, back in September 9th, everyone was assuming that the dollar was going to zero. Interesting. Pivot point moving average, based on the close this day, indicated that there could be a change in the direction. The predicted support targeted based on a pivot point moving average method also helped identify not only the market turn, but the potential low. So that was an actual trade system setup, and this is the exact market analysis using this method.